In a remote part of Death Valley, we see a shabby building. It looks like an old abandoned 1940s gas station. It's a quiet lazy afternoon when a customer goes to fetch her car, which was being repaired in the garage here. Help! Somebody call the police! We hear sirens in the distance arriving on the scene. Tell me what you saw. I came here to fetch my car. And there he was on the ground, Dad. Can you give me your telephone number and address? I might have some more questions for you. Would you mind if I called you? I'm afraid. Don't worry. If there are problems, we will protect you. Call us whenever you need anything. I'm afraid, but okay. I do want to help you. The victim is Victor Valentine, brother of Charlie Valentine. Their parents ran a very successful gas station back in the day. When Fay died, the sons let it go completely. It's a disaster. Charlie never sets foot in the gas station. Victor uses it to make money, repairing cars when he's not too drunk to do so. Both those Valentine sons are losers. They have lots of enemies as well. Let's listen. While Detective Samantha Smart questions the victim's girlfriend, Ethel. Hello, ma'am. Thank you for coming into the station today. I'd like to ask you a few questions. It won't take long, just a formality. No problem. What was your relationship to the victim? He was my regular boyfriend. I was about to leave him. He was a loser. Oh, really? Why would you say that? He was lazy and never had a cent. Besides, he has had a mistress for years. The jerk. Interesting. Tell me about this mistress. She's the hag who married that banker for his money. The mistress is married to Chet Chase, the banker? Yeah, the dreamed couple. What do you mean? She plays the victim. In what sense? She'll never leave that fool as long as the money keeps coming. Really? Tell me about the victim. But why does he never leave her? Tell me more. He promised me for years that he would marry me. Interesting. Yeah. I have wanted to kill him many times, wouldn't you? Of course, I want to kill him. He kept me hanging for years. Oh, really? He's a cheater. In what sense? He kept lying and telling me they were finished. Again and again he did this. Did he? And it was always a lie. He never broke up with her. Not once. Smith, the banker's wife. She has been described as very jealous and angry about the victim's involvement with her girlfriend Ethel. She's not a very nice person. She's lazy and loves money more than people, unscrupulous. She's a real piece of work. She left her first husband when he was in real need. She's a drunk. When she's drunk, watch out. She's mean. The main reason she stays with her husband is for his money. She actually despises him. She has an obsession with our victim, Victor Valentine. Patricia has been involved with him for years. No matter what he does, she still continues to stalk him. She won't let him go. She also hates the girlfriend with a passion. Ethel is her enemy. Victor swore again and again that he had broken up with Ethel, but each time Patricia discovered it was a lie, all lies. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you for coming. I'd like to ask you some questions. It's just a formality. Okay. 
No problem. Where were you between 6 and 7 p.m. last night when Victor Valentine was murdered? I was eating at the restaurant with my husband. We will be checking to see if other people saw you there. You can ask my husband, or the waiter, or just check the security cameras. What was your relationship with the victim? Well, I knew him, but not very well. He was just an acquaintance. You know, it's very dangerous to lie to a police officer. He was one of my friends. I think he was a bit more than that. Let's put it this way. We were lovers. Tell me, what do you think of his girlfriend at all? She's a biatch. Yes, she's a bitch. But can you be more specific? He broke up with her many times, but she wouldn't let him go. Can you explain? He was a weak person. He swore to me that they were finished many times, and not once was it the truth. He was a die-hard liar. Would that be enough for a reason to kill him? Yes, this is a good reason to kill him. This doesn't mean I killed him. Go on. I hated him for what he did. But as I said, I didn't kill him. I've got an alibi. Don't leave town. We'll be in touch. Chip said he and his wife were eating together. That is his alibi. But there is a hole in time in Chet's alibi. He could have gotten away to kill the victim. He had enough time to go to the gas station and come back. He had motive and he had opportunity. We also discovered his wife is lying about how long he was away from the table. Notice that this banker Chet is not very clear, composed or convincing. He seems rather nervous. Hello, sir. Thank you for coming. I would like to ask you some questions. I'm here to help. We know you're a busy man and we appreciate your taking your time to come down here to the police station. Let's get this over with. I suppose you know why you are here. Yes, it was an unfortunate accident. You are aware your wife was having an affair with the victim, aren't you? What are you talking about? I'll cut to the chase. Tell me what you knew about your wife's affair with the victim. I don't know what you mean. If you know something, we could charge you with obstruction of justice. That's a crime. Please, do I need a lawyer here? Let's be real. You have both motive and opportunity, and your alibi doesn't hold up. What? And we've got the security cameras to prove it. You have both motive and opportunity, and your alibi doesn't hold up. What? And we've got the security cameras to prove it. Are you sure you want to continue with this fairy tale? Okay, okay. Isn't it time for the truth? I've always known that she was cheating with him. Did I hate it? Definitely. But it wasn't enough of a reason to risk everything. He checked out your alibi and there is a problem. How can you account for it? What problem? You claimed you were outside having a smoke for 7 to 10 minutes, but we studied the footage from the security camera. What do you mean? As a matter of fact, you were gone twice as long as you claimed. This time lapse coincides with the time of the murder. What are you accusing me of? Nothing. However, everyone is a suspect at this point. Should I be worried? Do I need a lawyer? You had motive and you had opportunity, so you remain a person of interest. Are you sure you want to stick to your story and you haven't left anything out? Hmm. If I were you, I would have a look at that brother of his, Charlie Valentine, a real tool. What does Charlie Valentine have to do with this? Charlie and I have been plotting behind Victor's back to take back the gas station. It was all Charlie's idea. Go on. I was having a hell of a time getting old Victor to pay his property taxes. How so? The bank has carried him for years out of respect for his parents. We were considering taking the property in court. 
but that is complicated. Go on. One day, Charlie approached me behind Victor's back. He told me he could get Victor's signature that would turn over the ownership of the gas station to the bank. Victor's brother would get half of the ownership for closing the deal and taking this problem off my desk. Was that the only reason you wanted to take Victor's property? No, I wanted to take everything he had for having an affair with my wife. I thought of killing him many times. Seriously? But I didn't do it, I swear. Why did your wife lie for you about the time you spent outside smoking? She knew I would look guilty, and it scared her. Okay, Mr. Chase, don't plan on leaving town anytime soon. We'll be in touch. Now let's meet Charlie Valentine and Mrs. Valentine. As Detective Samantha Smart tries to get to the bottom of the Victor Valentine murder case. So far, we have a love triangle between Victor Valentine, Patricia Chase, and Victor's girlfriend, Ethel. They all seem to have motive enough to kill Victor Valentine. Then we have a plot by Charlie Valentine and the banker, Ch Chase, to take the victim's gas station. Now, let's watch while Detective Smart interrogates Charlie and Mrs. Valentine. We searched your house. We found some evidence. Does this map look familiar to you? Did you even have a search warrant? Don't worry, ma'am. We know what we're doing here. I know this looks bad. I can explain. This map clearly indicates there is probably a billion dollars worth of oil under that gas station. People have killed for less. Yes. Victor and I had our differences. But I would never kill him. I think you and Chet Chase plotted behind Victor's back to seize the property and profit from the oil. That leaves you as our main suspect. That's not true. We did not plot together to kill Victor for the oil. Chet didn't even know about the map or the oil. My wife and I were the only ones who knew the map and the oil existed. But I swear on my mother's head that I did not kill my own brother. Mrs. Valentine, where were you last night between 6 and 7 p.m. when Victor was murdered? I was at home with my husband. No, honey. Remember, I went out to the store. That's why it's... I have receipts, and the security cameras must have seen me. That proves I didn't do it. And what about you, Mrs. Valentine? You stupid idiot! You've ruined everything! I gave my life to you! I did this for you, for us! I have suffered all these years! I had to do something about this terrible life you have given me! Oh my god! No. We had all that money buried there. You know, Victor would never have given you a cent of it. I had to get rid of him. I just had to get rid of him. How could you do that? He was my brother. 